the path the human soul takes after death, according to a secret U.S. military program. Now, before we get into this, I want to, again, wish everyone a happy new year. Today is February 2nd. It's the presentation, the feast of the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ to the temple when the Virgin Mary took the baby Jesus 40 days old, 40 days after his birth on Christmas Day, to be presented to the temple, to God. The firstborn of every mother's womb is dedicated to God. Now, he came to, the, to earth to, in order to help us and protect us from the wiles of the devil. Now, uh, of course, we know that uh, in these past 2,000 years, we've had many saints in every generation that have helped us come closer to Christ. And every Christian has that grace to bring other, other people to the glad, the glad tidings that there is a life after death. And God, Christ, has given his every last drop of his blood to save all of us. Now, uh, that's just a, an introduction of this, but let's go into the uh, Greek article I'm translating for you so that we can see what the military program has to say about this. Please support my Patreon channel since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. The human soul comes into being with the conception of the uh, person in the mother's womb. Now I'm translating for you. The path of the soul after death according to a secret U.S. military program. For the past 40 years, the United States government has secretly trained a select body of military personnel in the art of far-sightedness, that is, mental capacity or remote viewing, as we would say, mental capacity of men to perceive the thoughts and experiences of others through the power of the mind. We call it psychic-psychic contact session. The Controlled Remote Viewing, RCV, from its introduction, was designed to provide access and communicate with our subconscious. The subconscious is a large pool of information, but we rarely follow it, allow it to function. By creating a connection between the conscious and the subconscious, we can then allow information from the subconscious to emerge superficially into the conscious so that it can be interpreted accurately and applied in practical matters. This practical application enables us to provide information, not only about our own lives, but also about the lives of others. Controlled remote viewing is a highly controlled set of physical and mental protocols that allow a person to bring something hidden inside the subconscious on the surface and objectify it. Protocols not only take care of the processes of finding hidden thoughts and feelings, etc., and bringing them to the surface, but also the process of keeping them clean from the quote-unquote pollution of the imagination and the emotions, desires, fears, and other infectious substances that are closer to the surface of a person's consciousness and which tend to color them incorrectly. A military psychic reveals this. Having served in this secret program for over 10 years, retired sergeant and psychic Lynn Buchanan who was selected for the first series of tests due to his special mental abilities during the entrance to selection tests published in 2003. All his experiences in program in the book, The Seventh Sense, The Secrets of Remote Viewing, as told by a psychic spy for the US military. The Seventh Sense, The Secrets of Remote Projection, as told by a psychic agent. The book generally has many references to individual incidents of psychic military operations which are not of significant interest. However, a part of it, pages 177 to 179, refers to psychic experiences related to what the soul goes, uh, where the soul goes after death. The four basic paths of the soul after death. And this is concerning uh, what we have been told by uh, these US military experiments. A, paradise sky. This place has all the characteristics of the real world, except that everything was perfect. There is an atmosphere of absolute and wonderful bliss. The sky has the deepest and most beautiful blue. 
Every tree was perfectly shaped, the perfect grass paved, a perfect flat landscape, and there was an overwhelming sense of joy and happiness. I was never allowed to stay in this place for long, but in fact I was politely removed by an invisible force so I could not see what happened to the person, the person who had passed, uh, in other words, who is no longer alive but biologically dead. I was watching. Later I could not reconnect with him. This led me to assume that after his passage to paradise, he stayed there. B, hell. So it's amazing that they talk about a heaven like a paradise and also the opposite, a hell. The bright black. Many people went through the experience of death and immediately found themselves in a place so dark that I can only describe it as a bright tan. The tan was so intense that it had its own presence. There has always been a vi visual contact of very dull and ominously threatening orange glow without a real form or shape, simply as a visible phenomenon. A closer look at the orange glow has always hindered by the presence of an anthropomorphic figure waiting impatiently for the deceased. I find it very difficult to adequately describe the experience, which never lasted more than a tenth of a second. The whole experience of the place was an absolute and complete horror. I never saw anything immediately that would cause horror, but all of a sudden I was overwhelmed by it. I would venture to say that he probably also felt fear, but he, it was uh, what, what uh, his experience says he had only lasted for a tenth of a second. Now, I never saw anything immediately that would cause horror, but all of a sudden I was overwhelmed by it. After such an encounter, fear and horror accompanied me to my home, to my dreams, and to my daily thoughts. And it was usually a week or so before I could make an effect, effective projection back to, my, uh, to any kind of a goal. I hated these goals. I was never able to detoxify from this experience. Obviously, the view of hell really shocked this person. C. Forgotten Disappearance the third area where people went after death was not a place at all. I was following the person through the experience of death and suddenly there was no person at all. I was able to constantly go back to the moment of their death and be in touch with them. But until then, then nothing, just nothing. There was no one there. I have done research for these people. I have never found one of them. They just ceased to exist. Note, there is always a possibility that these souls came out of the matrix completely and passed to another level of existence where there is no possibility of communication with the mediums. This reminds us of Buddhist nirvana. D, reincarnation. This person suddenly has other physical characteristics, different environment, different life situations, etc. But there was a very strange and unexpected view of this type of posthumous existence. Each of them suddenly became a child of about 12 or 13, one of them was still aware of and remembered his predecessor and was confused. I remember this man being a political leader in a previous life and at the time of his death suddenly found himself standing outside in the front yard of a more modern American suburb style house. He found himself wearing cowboy clothes. He was standing in front of the house with his young parents looking at him with a smile. He did not know these people. He looked to his right and saw a younger sister. When he realized what happened, he accepted his new situation. I would lost touch with him, so I... All I had, so I had accompanied him as he became a young man. Buchanan also said that he met cases of the dead who were reincarnated in, past, in times of past. In fact, he saw a man who suddenly appeared in another life dressed in clothes and doing some things at a time that he later recognized as Minoan Proto-Greek. These revelations raise more questions than they answer and are really very impressive, although somewhat expected in their general characteristics. The field, uh, the, uh, so you can feel free of uh, uh, leaving your comment concerning this. And as we know, this is, uh, of course, reincarnation does not take place. Uh, this is, of course, some various religions believe that you can uh, reincarnate into a, you know, a cow or a donkey or a fly or something or a frog or a tree. Uh, no, that's not so. Uh, we are made in the image of God. Now, this is translated to you, for you from Greek by Demetrius Alexopoulos, Triplopodia in Greece, from uh, the other Astika. And I just wanted to tell you, today I had lunch with the, the priest from our church. We were talking about uh, spiritual experiences. 
because, you know, a lot of these priests, a lot of our priests have the grace of discretion, of um, prophecy, you know, like a lot of the uh, holy men of the past were seers, and and, they, and he explained to me, he says, can you imagine, we were, we were seeing something having to do with uh, spiritual entities, good and evil as well. Uh, he says, can you imagine people that are, have the grace of seeing angels, but also demons? Um, how uh, he, and he said, this is really a cross for them. Uh, uh, the cross of, you know, prophesying for someone that something good may happen, something beneficial, but what happens if you know that something is not going to happen, is not, something good is not going to happen? For example, you want to tell a person, don't go to the, to the grocery store today because there's going to be a holdup and you may be involved in something that is not going to be good for you. And um, what can we say? Uh, what, can the, what can that person say if he, he foresees something? And, uh, and I came out with a comment, you know, saying, well, look, if God knows what he gives us, if, if, he, he, if he's going to give us a knowledge of that there are demonic beings, he, he usually first gives us a vision of angels, or he has a saint come and uh, comfort us, so that we know that there's heaven, but we also know that there's the opposite of heaven, there's hell. Um, there are angels, but there are also fallen angels, you know. Um, so if, 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 if uh, and I told him, I said, I have had spiritual fathers who have told me, um, something nice, but, uh, they, they may have known of, uh, something difficult, but they didn't want to tell us that they don't, they don't hurt us. Like, like, no, I don't know. That's their guidance. That, that, that's what they're supposed to do, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, tell me what you think. Uh, this is from the Adrastica and I'll leave a link below for you. Thank you very much.